Uh, welcome back everybody for this video I'll be discussing the oxidation of alcohols and basically what's going to be happening is I'll be using two different sets of reagents to change an alcohol to a carbonyl compound okay and the alcohols that we'll be focusing on are only primary and secondary alcohols these reactions don't work with um, tertiary alcohols and I'll explain that towards the end of the video so let's get started so if we have okay that's supposed to be an O a primary alcohol right I'll put primary right next to it if we have a primary alcohol okay if we have a primary alcohol and if we use PCC what we'll do is that we'll develop or generate an aldehyde okay we'll generate an aldehyde and um, and I'll show you the way how I usually go and and do this in my head so if we're starting off with let me fold this okay so if we are starting off with something like this the same thing here remember that there are two hydrogens which we have not drawn in the way I do this even though this may be uh, possibly incorrect the way I, th the way I do it helps me uh, imagine the product the product we want to draw is this and the way I do it is basically I form a double bond with that oxygen I get rid of one H that's attached to the oxygen and I get rid of the other H attached to the carbon that's that's attached to the oxygen so there's your aldehyde right there and if you turn it like this there's your aldehyde basically there's your carbon attached to the, the oxygen double bonded your R and your H again here's your product your R attached to the carbon double bond to O and your H and that's the way I usually imagine and imagine it in my head so the second one okay I, I keep this paper for the next part if you have a secondary alcohol put a secondary there and you use PCC excuse me you can oxidize the system to form a ketone as drawn as such okay so this is an aldehyde and this is a ketone okay and so in this case when you're forming the ketone the way I usually think about it in my head so if this is your alcohol and you're using okay wait a get rid of this piece right here okay this is our alcohol right same thing as that we're using PCC all I do is again we have an extra H there in order to generate this I form a double bond there okay get rid of the H attached to the O get rid of one other H attached to the carbon that's attached to the O okay and there's your ketone it matches up next one okay is if you have a again a primary alcohol right and if you use CRO3 and H2SO4 you'll generate a carboxylic acid okay you generate a carboxylic acid so I'll write acid on the side okay again the way I usually do this in my head is that if this is the alcohol we're dealing with and we're using CRO3 H2SO4 right all I do and we know this may be incorrect like because I'm not drawing the mechanism um, the way I usually think about it in my head all I do is form a double bonded O again 
initially there was two H's, I get rid of both H's that were initially attached to here and draw a double bonded O. And that gives you your product, which is a carboxylic acid. Right? And that's the way I do it in my head. Just draw a double bonded O between uh, on the carbon that's attached to the alcohol. There you have it. So for example, I'll, I'll give you guys an example. If you have this type of um, there's your um, alcohol, this primary, and let's just say we use CrO3H2SO4, right? The product will be, okay, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, carbon chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, I think that's how it is, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? And I just, all I do, the carbon directly attached to the oxygen, I form a double bond, Oh, there you have it. It's simple like that. And finally, you guys, it is a secondary alcohol. And if we use CRO3, H2SO4, we generate a ketone. Okay, let's write ketone here. So there's two ways to generate the ketone using uh, having a secondary alcohol as our starting material. You can use PCC or the CRO3 H2SO4 reagent. Okay, and again it's the same I think of how to form a ketone using these reagents the same way I think of making a ketone using this PCC. Form a double bond, double bond between the C and this O get rid of that H and get rid of that H and I'll give you a ketone okay now I said earlier in the start of this video that I'll explain why um, we can't do um, we can't use a tertiary alcohol to form a carbonyl compound so let's just say for example we have um, I'll do on this other paper right here Let's just say, for example, we have this tertiary alcohol. If we try to, because remember, in, in all of these steps, right, in all of these reactions, the R group has not been touched. It has remained in the product, okay? You see, the R groups are still in the product, the R groups are still in the product, R groups are still in the product, and the R groups are still in the product. The number thing, the number one thing that we lose in every reaction is a hydrogen, okay? And if you, we use that same reasoning, if the R groups are remain remain in the product, let's just say that our product has an R, 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 and we're supposed to form a this is a alcohol, right? And we're supposed to form a a carbonyl compound, let's say we try to form a carbonyl compound using whatever type of reagent, well that violates the octet rule. This carbon now has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons it completely, sorry about that, it completely ruins the, and it goes against the octet rule because again, if we follow the same type of pattern, the R groups remain the, that start off in the reactant remain in the products. The R groups that remain, that start off in the reactant remain in the products if we try to form a carbonyl compound, um, it, it violates that octet rule. And that is one of the reasons why um, you can't have a tertiary alcohol. You have to have a uh, primary secondary alcohol because you could lose H's. And there you have it. This is all there is to the oxidation of alcohols. We do a little quick recap like always. Primary alcohol, use PCC, get an aldehyde. Secondary alcohol, use PCC, get a ketone. Primary alcohol, using CRO3, H2SO4, you get a carboxylic acid. Secondary alcohol, CRO3, H2SO4, you get a ketone. Again, if we have a tertiary alcohol and we follow the patterns like it has been occurring here, the R groups do not move anywhere, they remain in the products. 
if it remains in the products and try to form a carbonyl compound, it violates the octet rule. So you can't form that carbonyl compound. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you, I hope you guys learned something. Again, if you guys have any requests on topics you guys are feeling a little bit sh uh, shaky on, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be happy to respond and possibly make a video. Thank you for listening and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.